I don't know if there's a truer song that we sing than that one. Dear Heavenly Father God, we just ask that you would help us, Lord, and as we dive into your word today, Lord, that you would speak to us, that you would help us, Lord, and God, we recognize our need of you every minute, every hour of every day, Lord. We thank you for the breath that is in our lungs and the hearts that are beating and we're able to be here today. And Lord, um, help us to uh, follow you. Help us to follow you and just help us to love you and love others. And we'll just give you the praise for that. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to be together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It is, uh, by the way, Sid and Mary, happy anniversary. It's been great getting to know you over the last few years. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. And the truth is we do have cake for everybody afterwards. I think for everybody, I'm not sure how big the cake is. It may be tiny, tiny little slices, but, but we do have cake for everybody in celebration. And let me just say, as far as just being here, thank you for the foundation that you laid to make this possible and, and that you followed the Lord. And, and I know we don't give praise to, to men, um, but, but we recognize when someone has been a follower of Christ and, and, and we appreciate that. I know you had tons of help over the years, uh, and, and, and you and Mary have just did a great job here of making this just a, a, a family, a home, uh, a place to be. And, and, and so a heartfelt thank you from all of us, and happy anniversary to you guys. So. And now for a controversial passage of Scripture. Um, so... We are in Hebrews, the end of Hebrews chapter 5, jumping into Hebrews chapter 6, and um, for those of you that have um, spent a lot of time in the, in the, in the Word, this, this, this comes up. This, this Hebrews chapter 6 passage tends to come up, but, uh, and it tends to be controversial because it, it, it seems like it may be saying that you can actually lose your salvation. Um, and, oh, by the way, let me say one more thing. Um, Good to see the Munstermans back here from the Dirty Herm. They're back in town. And uh, it is actually 178 degrees there today, so they're glad to be in Bend. And, uh, but we're glad you guys are back here for the weekend and, uh, and glad to hear everything's going well there. So anyway, okay, that was another ADD moment there. I think we're back on track. All right, so, um, so th- th- as far as controversy, we have this situation where um, the author of Hebrews is starting to dive really deep into who we are in Christ. He's talking about who Jesus Christ is, that he is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, and he, he, he intros that. Then he pauses for this passage to reprimand the, 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 the readers a little bit, to get on them a little bit, to, to admonish them a little bit, and then he jumps right back into the to the deep end, so to speak, in the, in the uh, teaching about Jesus and Melchizedek and the high priesthood and what all that means and our relationship to him and why we should be in awe, why we should be so thankful because of the magnitude of what Jesus has done for us, etc., etc. So basically what this is, it's, it's a parenthetical um, pause in, in the teaching to, to set uh, the people straight. In your mind's eye, kind of go back to algebra class. Anybody ever take algebra? Yeah, that sounds positive. Um, I grew up in West Virginia. I could pronounce algebra. Um, I remember I did, I did. I got to algebra 2, and I got a D minus. And I was so happy that I didn't have to retake it. So that was pretty much it for me. And uh, I've been pretty well served by not knowing that much math up to this point in time. So kids, don't worry about it. No, I'm just kidding. Work hard. Study. Pays off. All right. So anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, Obviously, certain things, you need it. But anyhow, imagine you're in algebra class. And I can imagine this well because this was me. You're in algebra class. You're teaching a class in algebra. You have the teacher up there teaching and she's getting ready to dive into some pretty weighty uh, a- algebra uh, problems. And there's a couple of kids uh, or a section of kids that are kind of cutting up and cracking up and, 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 and not paying much attention. The teacher stops from the heavy teaching to set the students straight and say, Hey, you guys are going to have a really hard time because you don't even have the basics down yet. 
You've got to get the you got to get two plus two down before we can dive into these weightier things. And there's no excuse for you to not be diving into these things and not knowing these things, right? There's a reason we have elementary school before we have middle school and high school, because there's some foundational things we have to have laid for us before we can build upon that foundation, right? And so that's sort of what the the author is doing here. He's pausing to 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 set some people straight. And some of us probably can use that, quite honestly. Um, And I'm included in that. So this is a challenge for more. This is a challenge to to maturity. This is a challenge to to move past the the ABC, so to speak. So the first thing we'll see, and and you'll notice my uh, catchy ABC. uh, Anyway, uh, I thought it was pretty genius. But anyhow, uh, the first thing that we'll see as we dive into this is the admonishment. The admonishment. It's time to mature. There's no excuses. And by the way, in this church, there's really no excuse not to move on to maturity. We've got uh, five of the six living generations really well represented in, in, in our congregation. There's, there's a lot of wisdom in this church. There's really no excuse to sit and not have the basics down pat, to not have a foundation upon which to build. We've got... Um, We've got an entire class named Foundations. We've got uh, a, a lot going on here. So, so we need to move to maturity. We need to move to maturity. I need to move toward maturity. We all need to be moving forward, correct? So this is what he says here, and, and see what you think. So it says, we have heard, we have much to say about this. But it is hard to make it clear. Remember, he's talking about Melchizedek, the high priesthood, all of that. So that's where we stop. Then he says, he stops, he pauses, and he says, We have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. Now remember, this is a church that's under more than likely under persecution. They've had some people fall away. They've had some people that, that were with them, that were in their community of believers, that are no longer there, that have denied the faith, that have left, that have said it's not worth it, and their faith is shaken. And they're, they're, they're just kind of frustrated. They're kind of stuck in neutral. And so he's, he's admonishing them a little bit here. He says, we have much to say about this, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact... Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. It's not good. It's not a good thing. He's saying we're constantly having to remind you of the elementary, foundational uh, things of the faith. And the truth is, the elementary, foundational things of the faith should be the things that, that, that are the lens through which we view the entire world. I think we'll see as the passage goes on. And the foundation, the foundational things should be what we're building upon, not what we're constantly trying to get reinforced in our lives. So, um, it says, uh, the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Now, it would be pretty disturbing if, you had a teenager, say you have a teenage kid and you invite a teenage friend over and they're, they're hanging out and, and he asks you if you have a bottle ready. A, a what? Yeah, I need a, a, I'm hungry, I need a bottle, right? And, and you'd be like, no, 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 that's, that's, that's really weird. Um, you, you, because it's not normal, it's not natural. You grow up, you need stronger food, Right? I'll never, the, the best day, uh, my, one of my happiest days, not my best day, not even close, but one of my happiest days, uh, one of my, it was a happy day, <laughs> was the last day we had to buy diapers. <laughs> I hated changing diapers. I didn't do it a ton, but I didn't like doing it. I was just, you know, one of those, just, I, I, but, but man, the last time when we bought those diapers, man, that was a happy day. That was good because our kids were growing up. They, they, they were maturing. They were moving beyond the element. They, they were starting to learn the elementary things of life and starting to be able to take care of themselves. And that's a good day, you know. And, and, and this is not good for a congregation to hear uh, somebody admonish them on. You need milk, not solid food. Uh, you know, that's, 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 that's because they weren't moving past it. They weren't maturing in their faith. 
He says here, anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Now, here's the thing. I grew up in a church where the good and evil were listed out for me in, 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 in a list or, or in a... Uh, yeah, I guess it just listed out for me as do's and don'ts. You know, it was, you do this, you do this, you read your Bible, you pray every day, you go to church, uh, we call it three to thrive, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, um, and a Sunday school, I guess four for more, I don't know, but there's a lot, lot to it. Um, you went to church, you read your Bible, you read a certain Bible, you dressed a certain way, you looked a certain way. In order to be an usher, you had to dress a certain way. In order to be in the choir, you had to dress a certain way. Women, you had to dress a really certain way, and, and, and we had to sing a certain way. We had to do all these things a certain way because uh, that, was, that was good. And, and then you had evil, and that was you didn't go to the movies, you didn't, you didn't drink, uh, you didn't dance, uh, you didn't... Um, uh, chew. You didn't go out with girls who do. Uh, you didn't. Uh, there was a lot to it, but there's a list of do's and don'ts. And you know what happens? That breeds immature believers because they're always weak-minded and and have a weak faith that's always looking to someone else that they perceive as being more mature than them, saying, "Yes, this is okay. No, this isn't." Yes, this is good. No, this isn't. And we look at, uh, should I marry this girl? Should I buy this car? Should I, I do this? Please tell me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to do. The, the author of Hebrews here is saying, solid food, mature food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. What we want here at, at, at our church family is for all of us to be moving toward maturity, to be using your discernment, to be, to be following the Spirit. Yeah, you're going to make mistakes. Yeah, we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to make decisions that we look back and say, wow, that, that was not the right decision. But we learn and we grow and we mature because we're practicing, we're using it, we're training ourselves to distinguish good from evil. We, we, we do seek counsel. We ask. We do those things. But we, we practice and we learn and we mature so we can pass that on to others. We don't always stay infants. We grow up spiritually. Amen? It's not about a list of news and don'ts. It's about your heart following the Spirit of God. And so he's saying that we need to mature. We need to move forward. Now, the next thing, here's the basics. He goes over the basics. What, what are the basics? What are the foundations? What are the elementary truths? It says, therefore, let us move because we need to mature, because we need to do that. Let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. Let's figure out the things that, are gonna, that, are gonna, uh, that we're going to look at, that are going to strengthen our faith, that we're going to be able to view the rest of the world through, and we're going to be solid on. We're going to be foundational on. And then let's move forward. Let's build on that foundation. So he says here, um, the first thing is this. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. Now what is that? That's justification. That's the moment when you come in and you say, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner and I need something. I need, uh, I need rescue. I need uh, Jesus. And we recognize that, and God, through his grace and his mercy, justifies us. He saves us. He saves us. That's elementary, isn't it? That's the very first thing. We, we uh, repent from the acts that lead to death. We repent of our sins, and we follow Christ. And, and we become what? Justified. Justification. What happened? What happened? I'm a Christ follower. I got saved. I was redeemed. However you want to frame it. It's foundational. I repented of my sins and Jesus saved me. I repented of my sins and Jesus reconciled me to the Father. I am His. It's foundational, right? We shouldn't have to always be uh, working through that and trying to figure that out. We've got to move beyond that. Stop trusting in what you're doing or stop worrying about what you've done and start trusting in what Jesus already has accomplished on our behalf. It's not about us being perfect. It's about the fact that he already was. And he places his righteousness on us. This is elementary. 
This is foundational to, to everything uh, that, that we are, that Jesus saved us. I'm justified. I'm not perfect. I'm close. No, I'm not. I'm not I just lied. Uh, I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not. But Jesus is, and I'm not trusting in me to get me anywhere because I fell over and over again. I'm trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, and I'm justified. I have his righteousness on me. I'm going to be with him forever. Foundational. First thing, what happened? I got saved. I'm his. I'm redeemed. Amen? What's the next thing? This one's a little more confusing. I had to go to the, the dictionary of Michael Long to help me out a little bit with this one, but um, don't tell anybody. He's not here. I don't want to give him any credit. All right, so anyway, it says instruction. This is the next thing. Instruction about cleansing rites and laying on of hands. Now, this word cleansing, uh, cleansing rites is, uh, uh, let, me, let me go to it exactly how it says it. Um, it is baptismos, baptismos. Um, for those of you Greek scholars, that's exactly how you're supposed to say that. You might have been saying it wrong all these years. So, um, but that's baptism and, 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 and the laying on of hands. And this has to do with, uh, I believe this has to do with, with the work of sanctification in our lives. You have the cleansing rites or, or the, the baptism are, are following and obeying God. Are, are, are taking steps toward maturity. When we get saved, uh, when, when we follow him, we, 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 we bab- get baptized. And what we do is we make a public display and, and show publicly what's happened inside, right? It's kind of like a wedding ring. I'm still saved without my wedding ring on. I'm still saved. I know this. I'm still saved regardless. But I'm still married without my wedding ring on. I'm still married. Now, I'm a huge temptation to other women without my wedding ring on. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, it, that's why I never forget it. It's just, it's just scary out there. Uh, I just hate to get, I hate the mob. I hate the, you know, the, the anyway, uh, the screams, the shrieks. Uh, so, um, but, but this, this what, what's this do? This shows, this shows the world that, that I, not only am I taken, but I'm taken by someone very specific, right? That, 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 this means to the world, this shows the world that I'm off limits. I'm sorry. Sorry. I know the disappointment is palpable in the room, but, but that's what that shows. I don't have to do it to be married, but I do it because I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the fact. I, I'm not ashamed of the fact. It's probably a better way to put it. I'm not ashamed of the fact that I'm married. I love my wife. I'm hers. She's my one and only period, right? And so that's what we do when we get baptized. We get up and we say, we're forsaking all other gods. We're forsaking ourselves. We're forsaking everything else. And we are telling the world that we are a Christ follower. It's a first step toward maturity, right? It's a sanctification. Then, then you have the cleansing rites. And the, 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 they're talking to Jews. And they know, uh, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot probably to that. But, but we'll leave that maybe for another time. But then they have the laying on of hands. Now, laying on of hands happen. Uh, traditionally right after baptism is a commissioning to go out and live for Jesus. You had laying on of hands for when someone's sick or when they need a healing. Um, you had the laying on of hands. And you also have a laying on of hands for when people are commissioned out for the work. Right? But you see, I think that means community. It has to do with living in a community. It has to do with being with each other and, and, and actually physically being around other people and you're laying your hands on other people uh, physically, uh, actually uh, showing what's really going on as a community that we're here together, we're working together, we're sending people out together, we're, trying to, we're praying for healing together. We are uh, uh, commissioning people out to go out and live for Jesus Christ together. We're a community and when we're a part of community, we see the process of sanctification happening. We need each other. We need Jesus and we need each other. Amen? Now that, I'm, I might be extrapolating just a little bit, but I really believe that that has to do with, with, with sanctification, which is also so, uh, very basic to our faith. Growth, the process of growth. The process of growth, the process of growth together. It says, the, the first one was justification, which was what happened. This one's sanctification, or what's happening. We're growing, we're maturing. We're not all on the same level. We're not all even close to the same level, right? But we're helping each other. We're walking through it. We're working. We're growing. What's happening? It may be a difficult circumstance. It may be hard. It, we may not understand it, but we're growing because we've been saved. We've been redeemed, and we're growing. And whatever God's bringing our way, he's, he's working on us, right? 
It's a process. Now, so here's the last thing here. Then the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment, which is glorification. What's going to happen? What will happen? Those are the basics. Those are the basics. So you have the, 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 the foundational elementary truths through which we should build our lives on and through which we should see every circumstance, everything that comes our way, everything that happens to us, our justification, what happened, sanctification, what's happening, and glorification, what will happen. I'm saved, I'm redeemed, I'm growing, and I'll be with him forever. So no matter what circumstance comes my way, no matter how many people disappoint us, no matter how many things happen that are crazy, that we can't explain, that we ask why about, that we just don't understand, if we have these foundational things down pat, as we look through that lens of justification, sanctification, and glorification, we have a strong faith that can withstand anything else, and our house is built on a solid rock, not on sand, because we have a true foundation. Amen? And now we build. Now we mature, right? So, now we have the consequences here listed, which is rejecting Christ and falling away. But there's a, there's a catch. It's not us rejecting Christ. Anyway, just wait. All right, so, it says in verse number four, it is impossible. Now, this is, this is a hard, this is a hard one. And by the way, I don't have all the answers. <laughs> you guys already knew that. But, but it's okay sometimes to not know exactly what's going on. To not know exactly what the author meant. So, but, but, but I think we can extrapolate what's going on here. It says, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. I think what is going on here, I don't think this is as, nearly as complicated or as controversial as it, has, as it seems. I think what is going on here is we have a group of people who had a tight-knit community of following Jesus, and they, they didn't have all the elementary truths down pat, and some of them started to fall under persecution, or the church started to fall under persecution, and some of the people who didn't have a relationship with God, who hadn't been redeemed to begin with, looked at it and said, it's not worth it, I'm out of here. It's just not worth it. It's not worth following Jesus if I'm going to die. It's not worth following Jesus if I'm going to lose my source of income. It's not worth following Jesus if I'm going to lose my friends or my family or be ostracized in the community or lose my position in the community. It's just not, let alone die, it's just not worth it. And they reject Christ. They fall away. And I think what happened is the true believers who didn't have a strong foundation are looking at it and they're, they're, they're questioning their faith. They're questioning whatever happened because they're not sure of what happened. They're not sure of what's happening, and they're not sure of what will happen. They, don't have, the, they have to be reassured in the elementary things so they're not able to move forward past the, the current difficult circumstance of some of their congregation falling away. And so I think what's going on here is he is setting the record straight for them and saying, look... Uh, um, it's impossible for those who have been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit. In other words, who've been a part of the community, who've been a part of the body, who, who've seen it, who's, who's been there. They were it here, but they weren't of us. They were with us, they weren't of us. The crazy thing that, that kind of grates on, on me a little bit on here and, and that, that I don't necessarily understand is I've seen people who've been in the church who fell away, who came back. I've seen it. I've absolutely seen it. I've seen people who were here who full on said, not here, but I've seen people in church who said, look, I'm out. I don't want to have anything to do with Jesus anymore. And they've gone. And 20 years later, they come back to Jesus. How many of you have seen something like that? Yeah, so we've seen that. So I don't think this is, this is not a doctrine that the author of Hebrews is expanding upon and saying, here's exactly what happens. I think he's trying to encourage a particular congregation to get them and to motivate them to move past the elementary things and on to maturity, is what I, is what I see in the passage. So um, it says it's impossible that they'll fall away. If they've fallen away, they can't, they can't be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. In other words, they're going in. People knew they were a part of the church, and they're going out and saying, Jesus isn't worth it. They've rejected Jesus. 
They've rejected him, and some people do. The thing is, this isn't a primer for us to try to figure out who has rejected and who hasn't. Only God knows that, right? That's God's thing. He knows that we don't. He knows who's, I've had my moments myself where I said, forget it, forget it. But, you know, so, but I, I don't know exactly who's rejected, exactly who hasn't. Um, he does, and that's his business, right? He's saying there is a group of people that, 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 that have tasted of all these things, have rejected it, and it's impossible for them to come back. That's what he's saying. To the, I don't believe they were saved to begin with. I don't believe they were redeemed. I don't believe they were um, uh, what we would call Christ followers to begin with. I believe, and we'll see here, that I believe it's like the, the seed that was thrown to the bad ground, that, that it may have sprouted up a little bit, but there was no root. When the sun came out, it scorched, and it was gone. Right? There's no root, no fruit. So anyway, to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain, often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. There's, there's, there's people that believe and there's people that reject. There's good ground and there's bad ground, right? That's just the way it is. Not everybody that comes into the church and even sits with us for a while is going to be a Christ follower. Not everybody. There will be some. There will be... Um, they're, 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 but we don't know who it is, right? But here's the thing. I think he's trying to encourage this particular congregation because look what he says next. He's saying, look, I know some of you fallen away. Don't get super caught up in, 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 in them falling away. Go on to maturity. Go on to maturity. So, sure, some have fallen away. And, and, and he's saying the ones that have fallen away can't, can't come back to repentance. That's what he's saying. But he's saying those have fallen away but now what? Look what he says. Here, here we have the, ah, what happened? Oh, we have to quit right there, I guess. Can you f- flip it forward one? Did it freeze up? Hey, there we go. Maybe, maybe this is better than a business meeting anyway, right? So, the directive. This is, this is the next, the, the, the last thing. It's, look what he says. It says, even though we speak like this, dear friends, even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case. In other words, this isn't you. This isn't you. Some of you are struggling with your faith. Some of you are questioning Jesus. But, but we have better uh, uh, things. We believe or we are convinced of better things in your case. He says, the things that have to do with salvation. We believe that you are Christ's followers. We believe that you're Christ's followers. The ones that are listening to this, we believe you're Christ's followers. Now, on the maturity. He says, um, verse 10, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. You've displayed genuine works uh, of a changed heart. You, 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 you've displayed that. We believe that, that this isn't you. Even though you're questioning your faith, even though you need to have the elementary things explained to you once again, we are convinced that you are Christ's followers. Now what? We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end. Persevere. Go on to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those through faith, who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Listen, perseverance. Not, we don't persevere in order to be saved. We're saved, therefore we persevere. And he's saying and trying to encourage those, he's saying, hey, keep on following Jesus. We're going to dive into deeper things here in a little bit, but I want to pause and I want to say it's time we mature, it's time we grow up, it's time we get the basics down, Pat, that we're saved, we're, we're, we're sanctified, and we're going to be glorified. Now, let's move on to maturity. Keep doing and following Jesus and doing the works that he'd have you to do and persevere and, and let's see each other in the fully realized redemption of Jesus Christ with him forever and ever and ever. Amen? That wasn't that controversial, was it? I think what he's trying to say here is, look, 
you guys are struggling, you're in a bad circumstance, let's get these elementary things down pat so we can build on it and mature and move forward, not get swept up and lost in a current of something bad, a church split, something crazy going on, but let's, who are Christ followers, move forward to maturity. Amen? Amen. Dearly Father, Lord, we just ask that you'd be with us today. We ask that you'd help us. Lord, um, we don't have, again, I know it was, it was alluded to a little bit, but this shooting here in Florida that happened this morning, God, we just ask that you'd be with those families. We ask that you'd be with the injured. We ask that you'd be with the, the family of the one who perpetrated the, the crime. Be with the ones who have been affected by seeing the carnage. And God, we don't understand. We honestly don't get it. We don't get the kind of hatred. We don't get the kind of, um, uh, we just don't get it. But Lord, we ask that you would show yourself mighty in a community that the church has tended to ostracize. Lord, show yourself mighty. Come down and be powerful. And God, show them your love through others that, they may, that there may be some Christ followers come from that. God, we just ask that you'd be with us, Lord, that we would move on to maturity. So many mature, wonderful saints here, and so many people in so many different levels of sanctification and growth and maturity. God, help us to help each other and help us to grow. Help us not to get swept up in the circumstances, but to view everything through the lens of of the truth of your word, of of our sanctification, and and you glorifying us uh, eventually. And God, help us as we go through the business meeting, as we talk about numbers, as we do those things, to, to just, just help us. Guide us, lead us through this process. Thank you for Sid and Mary. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for what you've done and what you're doing. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.